Hello everyone, this is Vicious, and welcome back to more Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. So in the last episode, we talked to Princess Zelda, made our way to Kakariko Village, talked to the guardsman, which gave us a bit of advice there to head back to the town market, and pick up a Hylian shield. We're actually going to need this Hylian shield for the next temple. Well, not temple, but dungeon. We're not getting to the temples just yet. So there we go. So since we got the advice, and we know the Guard of Death Mountain, we got a bit of a discount on the shield. So good for us. Less money we have to spend. So we basically spent about 70 rupees on that. Now that we have the shield, I was gonna go do the, um, bomb chew bowling, but apparently it's not open just yet. I think we need the bomb bag before we can do that. This is another heart piece you could pick up, but once we have the bomb bag, we'll come back this way. So yeah, see? Not open yet. He's extremely lazy, though. Very, very lazy. So now that we have our shield, we're gonna head back all the way to Death Mountain. I was gonna do the, um, shooting gallery here, but uh, I'm not ready for that yet. Even though in this, uh, not in this video, but the next video, my aiming is, like, godly for some reason. I have no idea why. It's just my aiming picks up really well. Oh, I forgot to mention, we're going to stop by the Happy Mask shop here and pick up the Keaton Mask, which we're actually going to give to that guard who kind of helped us with the shield discount, so... It's the least we can do. Also, this guy still scares me. I remember seeing this guy as a kid and he terrified me. I think I had, like, two nightmares. This guy was, like, haunting me in my dreams. I think it was the first time I played Ocarina of Time and then when I played Majora's Mask. And Majora's Mask was a lot more creepier. When we get to that game, though... We'll see why he's a lot more creepier. So anyway, we're going to pick up the Keaton Mask here. Now, this is a side quest you can do. Um, there's a lot of masks you can pick up. Ending with the Mask of Truth, which is somewhat useful. We're actually going to do that side quest, but we're going to do that just before we leave to, for the Temple of Time. Because there's a lot of running around you have to do. And I have to remember where some of the later masks go. Because it's been a while since I did the side quest. So anyway, back to Kakariko Village, and all the way to Death Mountain. I was actually going to cut this part out of just me walking over towards there, but it's not really that far, so I'm not really too worried about it. Not much going on, though, because once we get to Death Mountain, we're going to have to stop by the Goron Village. Well, the Goron City, actually. I believe it's a city. Not really much of a city, actually, but it's a city nonetheless. That's what they call it. I guess, right? I mean, if that's your thing. Also, hello, you wonderful chicken, you. I'm done trying to collect you, yeah. So every time you restart the game, the chickens are just kind of running around, so... You don't have to do it again. And no, you can't abuse the system of getting another bottle every time you collect the chicken. She just kind of thanks you every time you do it. That's about it. So anyway, we're gonna go up to the guard here. We're gonna put our Keaton mask. And he's gonna go, oh my god, you have the mask I want. But yes. Yes, we do. See, he thought we were in disguise, but really, we just have a mask for you. Yeah, this is the key something mask. If you can kind of tell, it is a mock of what Pikachu would look like in the Zelda universe, I guess you could say. But yeah, it's pretty much a Pikachu mask. Just not looking exactly like Pikachu. It's more like a fox in this case. So anyway, you take a look at him right there wearing the mask. I wonder if he ever actually gives that to his kid or he just wears it all, all for himself. Because, you know, every time you walk by him, he still has that mask on. A little creepy. Also, you want to make sure you have some rupees on hand, so when we go back to the Happy Mask Salesman, we have the money to get back to him. Because we did make a 5 rupee profit from the mask, but it still cost us about 10. So we did make sure we at least have 10 rupees to get back to him. Also, there's a gold sculpture right in there. Um, you can't open that just yet until you have the bomb. And you also need the boomerang as well because the gold sculpture is kind of high up in the world. So you won't be able to get the token. I do try to get the token in uh, the next episode, but I realize I need the boomerang. Once again, the boomerang becomes very important. Also, there's a heart piece up there, but you can't get that until you have um, the beans and until you're playing as an adult because the bean sprout won't grow until you're an adult. It's actually one of my least favorite side quests to do in this game is um, finding all the bean locations and all the soft dirt patches. It 
it's not very fun, it just gets tedious, and you have to save up a lot of money. Because I think it maxes out, like, like I think 50 rupees per uh, seed, and it just becomes tedious. So anyway, we make our way to the Goron City. Lovely place here. I mean, it's so... Oh, so amazing. So lively. That's what we're going to go for, lively. So anyway, we're going to make our way to the downstairs area. Also, this is another area we'll be coming back to a little bit later. But as you see, we lack a hook shot, which you need to cross there. And the song of time. Yeah, we're not getting there for a while, guys. Anyway, make your way down this way, and you want to play the Zelda Lullaby. Basically, this will open a door up, and we could talk to Darunia. I believe, I think it's actually this part where we actually get to see the, uh, the amazing dance of Darunia. It's amazing, guys. I'll tell you this right Anyway, we're going to come talk to him. How's it going, buddy? Oh, well, that's a lovely way to greet us. I guess. Yeah, so once he heard the song, he thought a messenger was coming, but instead, you got us. So yeah, this is Darunia. Basically, he is the boss of the Gorons. But he's a little upset right now. Uh, basically, what happened was Ganondorf came, unleashed a creature inside of Dodongo's cavern, where their food supply comes from, and blocked the passage off. And you don't open up the passage until he gives them the spiritual stone of fire. So yeah, Ganondorf's kind of a dick. You can't already tell. So anyway, we actually need a certain something from Sorry. See, Nobby's there like, telling us 20 times over again that we have to head to the forest. Now you might be thinking, oh my god, we have to run all the way back to the forest. No, we do not. Actually, there is a hidden passage up here. Not really much of a hidden passage, but it's actually a passage which you need to light the torches first. So we're going to need like, sticks. So once you light these torches up, you can drop the bomb to blow up the passage right? and up the right? to the, the forest area, or Kokiri Forest in this case. So yeah, the torch trail starts right in the dark of the chamber, and you can pretty much try to light all the torches up if you want to, but really all you have to do is light the bottom ones, which will start making that uh, hot there spin, which is actually kind of funny. Also, a little bit of advice for you. If you're doing this, um, you can light a few torches and then swing your sword, put it away, and then pull it out again. It's just kind of nice and you can never really put out a few Also, this is hilarious. Yeah. For some reason, Link just like to spin around. So, yeah, we're gonna pick up some more fire. And we're gonna this way. So, once you light the two torches up here, these will stay permanent. Basically, torches that have like, a wooden post there are more permanent torches. The one that's just kind of straight up metal, they will eventually go out. Especially when it comes to like completing something that really locks something. So, just a little heads up there. Anyway, we'll blow up this path and we we'll make our way to the Lost Woods. Now, this part, when it comes to the Lost Woods, is a little bit easier than, say, when we have to go back here later on. Anyway, our good friend Gabor Gabor stopped us to tell us more useless information. Yes, we are in the Lost Woods. Basically, he's going to tell you that um, you're looking for the Sacred Forest Meadow. And if you listen to the uh, song that's playing in the background, you'll start picking up when you go towards the door. That's where you want to go. Yeah, we can get through this forest pretty easily. We don't need your help. We got all. We got this. Fly away now, Gabora. Yeah, once you hit the adult phase of this game, Gabora Gabora is no more. So be happy. But later on, when you actually have to uh, do the temple here, it's a little more tedious to get through this place. So if you can remember how this is set up, you can get through this part super easy. If you don't, then you might have a bit of trouble. Basically, if you go at the wrong spot, it's going to shoot you right back into um, Kokiri Forest. Basically, we started the game. So, make sure you don't do that. So anyway, this is a Sacred Forest Meadow. And we got to go to the Wolfos. Wolfos are annoying, as we say. Basically, they try to attack you head on, they will be lost But if you wait till they swing and show their backside, you can do a lot more damage. A 
jumping slash will wreck your day. So one good jumping slash is okay. Also, we have some more Deku scrubs. You guys are so uh, aggressive. They're not gonna help you. Yeah. Yeah. In this case, we can actually kill them. So just, you know, unleash your vengeance. These guys are really fast. They shoot really fast. They will get tired eventually, and that's a good time to go slash them off. Yeah, just shutting up now. Like, listen, listen, I, I, I get it. I get it, Nami. I'm not gonna listen to you, but it's not gonna be a good I'm just gonna sneak by this guy. Nice, he's still gonna pop out and shoot the deck and shoot at us because he's kind of a. Okay, put the stab in the face, and you're good to go. Simple stuff. This part's really easy, actually. Now, later on, in this area, oh, it's super annoying. I wanted to call Deku's Force in this case because they're a little more aggressive and violent than the normal Deku Scrub. Because you have Deku Scrub and you have the Business Scrubs, which when you run into them and you hit them back with the Deku Nut, they will sell you some items. We'll actually be seeing a few of those in the Dango's Cavern when we get to that place. Anyway, here's Saria. It's been a long time there. Somehow just does another ocarina. So I guess that ocarina you gave us was really not that special. Could you have another one? I see how it is, Saria. Anyway, Saria here is going to teach us a song that will become a little bit more useful for us in this part. And not so much later on. Unless you need some advice. So anyway, she asked us to play a song with her, the ocarina with her. She's going to teach us now Saria Song. Now, Saria Song's purpose is to help Darunia get over his depression. And it also is a way for her to get some advice from Saria. Basically, she gives you like little tips of what you should be doing next. Also, Nabi will sometimes tell you to, you know, what would Saria have to say? So, yeah, if you need some advice, talk to Saria. <laughs> She's all happy and everything. Look at her. So for those who don't know, the Kokiri never grow up. They're kids forever. They have the appearance of kids. Now, I don't know if that makes them a boy or but they are the kids forever. Which is interesting. The whole village is pretty much just kids. That's why you see the little kid running the shop, and all you see is nothing but kids. So anyway, we're going to make our way out of the single forest meadow. <laughs> basically, fairies will heal you when you use them, but if you die, they will automatically resurrect you with basically half your health. So it's always good to have a few fairies, especially when you get to tricky walls, or you go into a dungeon or a temple that's really tricky. So yeah, if you want to get out here super fast, just climb up this ladder here and hop up right here. I was actually trying to look over here to see if anything actually important because later on there is a So you have to you actually have to plant a seed and it should take you to a piece of heart, I think. Anyway, we get to see Gabora Gabora one more time because this episode is all about Gabora Gabora. I don't know why he has to show up every time, but he's there. So anyway, Gabora Gabora tells us, hey look, you learned that song. Maybe you should like, you know, go talk to Darunia over there. Basically, he's telling us a little bit too late in the game how to play the ocarina and how the ocarina works. Basically, whenever there's a musical score that pops up, basically a song is required. But you can also play a song whenever you feel like it. And he also highly recommends that you um, play a song that you know. Playing any other songs that you don't know. Oh, my God. 
And we're gonna head back to Boron City because we have what we need. So for those who don't know this, I am sticking on a RPG. I'm at the moment right now because I'm really not going that way. Probably my favorite scene in the entire game. Maria breaking out and dancing like a mad man. Look at him. A lot of people love this scene, just because of how hilarious it is. Anyway, we helped him get over his depression, and now we actually get to talk to him like civilized humans here, so. Anyway, he introduces himself as Darunia. He is the big boss of the Gorons, and we do have something we ask him to ask you about. That spiritual son of fire that we have. Yeah. See, this one is known as the Goron's Rupee. to go inside to Dango's cavern and deal with the monsters that are now invading his feet territory. Basically, the Gorons use the uh, bomb flowers in there and the rocks as a food source. And basically, with the monsters inside the cavern right now, they're cut off from the food source, so basically they're um, kind of... We're going to go in there help him. Also, we get the Goron's bracelet. This will allow us to pick up bomb flowers. But in this dungeon coming up, we're actually going to get our own stuff off. So, we're not going to get our own stuff off. So if you need any red potion, any hearts, any bombs, which you actually can't buy right now because they'll always try to get out of stock. doing this part as a kid and it took me forever to find the right angle to throw the bomb. I don't know why. But like, I used to hear him throw the bomb like five, six, seven times mm -hmm. until I got it right. Mm -hmm. But then again I was just a kid. Like see that's what I would do right there. Throw it right on top there. And put that in there. So I'd just come over a little bit over here. And even throw it really too far. Like right there, it would still blow it up. Also, we could get an assignment. Okay, so we're going to take a little shortcut here. Mm -hmm. Down to the area. Mm -hmm. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this episode. In the next part, we're going to take on the Dino's Cavern. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.